Let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about ethics, baby. Let's talk about you, T. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things <laughs> that may be. Let's talk about ethics. What's up, people? We are talking about ethics today. Ethics and meditation. First things first. First order of business that I always forget, except for this time, I'm not forgetting, is that I'm pasting the notes to the chat for today's session. And if you're watching this after the fact, look for the notes in the description of the video and in the comment section. So let's talk about ethics, baby. I got to do it again. Let's talk about you, T. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about ethics. <laughs> okay. Proud nerd, corny geek humor. Ethics and meditation is the 10% happier self-care journey. Today is April 8th. 2020. Let's start off with the ethics definition. Number one, moral principles that govern govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Number two, the branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles. Okay, before I go any farther, I forgot to say, whoa, almost ran into a tree. That's crazy, but I got I got good reflex from good reflexes from martial arts, from years of martial arts. I decided to come out and take a walk. Loosen up the shoulders, you know, get some shoulder rolls in, get some fresh air, some O2, <laughs> get some sun. Stretch the legs, walk. Taking a walk is always refreshing. And especially during this time when most of us have corona cabin fever. So I'm happy to take a walk today and to do this self-care session. Let me know if you all can hear me clearly. And here we go. So more principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity. Number two, the branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles. At its simplest, ethics is a system of moral principles. Ethics is concerned with what is good for individuals and society. And is also described as moral philosophy. The term is derived from the Greek word ethos, which can mean custom, habit, character, or disposition. So when we think about ethics, you know, ethics is a mutable subject. It's a subject that means different things to different people because depending on your culture, your community, depending on your background, we have different codes codes of ethics we spent time in history arguing about these ethics the rights and wrongs and the behaviors we fought wars like we've evolved we've made some mistakes we've grown from them we've made more mistakes you know ethics is a a wide range of a subject as you see me almost tripping fall I keep forgetting, you can't walk on these city street. Hey, let me let me show you this. I forgot, you have to actually pay attention. Because stuff like that will kill you. <laughs> it will kill you on these sidewalks. Anyway, so ethics means different things to different people. And we all have our different systems and understandings of rights and wrongs. Some of us go by religious books for looking for that information and to get our moral framework or ethics from. Some of us lean to our ancestors and their traditions that may be even more oral traditions. Some of us 
Um, I like the way Brother Polite talks about it. And I have a tune called Raise Up where it features one of his lectures at the end. And the way he talks about culture is is pretty mind-blowing. But what made me think about it was he talked about basically like trial and error and what we call permutations and basically mix mixing and matching different things so that you can basically experiment, see what you come up with. And then from there, you can naturally gain some insight about causes and effects, actions, behaviors, and activities, and whether they're beneficial or not. I come from a place of secular humanism, which is influenced by various uh, ways of thinking, but definitely is more so concerned with not necessarily dealing with religious ways of looking at it or the idea that our morals and ethics are handed down by a deity or supernatural force, but more so as the beautiful sun shines on my face. (laughs) Um, You know, more so looking at our behaviors, looking at what we're doing and being able to make justified decisions based on evidence from our different uh, experiences. Anywho, no matter what way you come to it, ethics is a wide subject that covers a vast area. But most of us understand it as behaviors. Hey, Marion, thanks for watching. Marion, we definitely got to chop it up on the psychology chip on IG. Um, I'm doing IG Live, so let's plan for a time in the future to chop it up there. I would love to hear your thoughts about what you're learning in psychology, and I am enjoying my psychology journey. Okay, point number two. So meditation allows us to hone in on our actions in an effort. Hey, Mandisa, I look forward to hanging out with you tonight. That is going to be a lot of fun. I so look forward to that. Meditation... Uh, allows us to hone in on our actions in an effort to be aware of beneficial and non-beneficial behaviors and ways of thinking. Things like mindfulness. I'm sorry, I just realized something about my notes. Things, things like, I'm sorry. Every time I see a comment, it takes my notes off the screen. (laughs) All right, here we go. Uh, Things like mindfulness, equanimity, compassion, kindness, etc., helps us to move gradually toward more and more positive ethics over time. Various thoughts and urges arise in meditation helps us to make more conscious decisions based on assessing short and long-term actions. So we're not talking about, (laughs) as Mendisa would understand if you're still there, we're not talking about the spookism, and we're not talking about the woo. (laughs) We're talking about something practical, Here's the deal. I said the other day, I put a post on Facebook where I said, um, take care of yourself on your path to enlightenment. I mean, to what some call enlightenment. I just call it having good damn sense. You know how people used to say, the old people say, I got good damn sense. I That's what I look at it as. So this is a practical way of being able to think about your actions because naturally meditation allows you to reflect It allows you not to be so impulsive and allows you to feel your feelings. And it's a process that gives you space in between what you're feeling and what it leads you to do as far as behaviors. So that's what we are talking about. Let me see what you all are saying. Marion says, hey, yes, we'll do soon. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Next point. Here we go. I'm going to try to keep it moving, right? As I keep it moving and walking. <laughs> so, mindfulness, equanimity, compassion, kindness, right? Short and long-term acts is what we look at. The bliss of blamelessness. I thought this was a cool concept. They called it the bliss of blamelessness, right? Hey, Rod, thanks for hanging out. The ability to assess our mistakes, I kind of summed it up this way, our the ability to assess our mistakes in a healthy way um, while not dwelling or ruminating negatively in a way that becomes more harmful 
than helpful to us. This is important. I'm going to talk about this for a few minutes. This is important because there is a fine line between going over things in your head to be able to reflect and self-assess um, your actions or the things that you've done, you know, the mistakes that you made or places where you're like, ah, I wish I had done that differently. There's a fine line between doing that, that from a perspective and a place that's healthy and doing that from a place of ruminating negatively about things that you either can't change or that you need to accept because of the fact that you are a human being living, learning, and growing every day. So a lot of times we'll have situations like that where it's, it's, it's way more than positive self-reflection. Way more than positive self-reflection. Like we're literally beating ourselves up. We're literally ruminating. And just from a, a, a very negative perspective, we are doing ourselves a disservice because instead of using our experiences to help us to make better decisions and accepting where we were at the time, accepting our thought process at the time, accepting the fact that we didn't know when we had to make this choice in order to learn and grow, sometimes, yeah, we, we don't allow that mindset and we wind up beating ourselves up for things. And that's never healthy. So I, it was something that I had to think about, even though I didn't have that problem of beating myself up over things. But I read an article uh, on Medium that talked about overanalyzing and the negative effects. And I realized something about myself. And I mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. I realized that I'm a person who naturally analyzes things because it helps me to actually plan. It's how I've built a successful business. It's how I've built a successful career and being able to really achieve a lot of things and help a lot of people on a day-to-day -day basis and diagnose shit and all kinds of stuff. But that's where it's healthy and how I've navigated through situations and conversations and all kinds of things, negotiations. But when you're dealing with something that you can't change and something that either requires patience or you're dealing with something where you're thinking about the negative outcome before you even get to it, I found that I was in some ways rehearsing negative feelings and rehearsing the negative outcome and I started to realize the unnecessary um, baggage and weight that I was putting on myself and all I was really doing was I thought that what I was doing was say I would have a say I was preparing for a tough conversation with someone well I might go through my head about their reaction and if I felt that their reaction was going to be negative then I would go through that in my head and I would think about my response I would feel the feelings of the negativity coming my way and maybe I might even be justified because that's what I can expect from them but the problem would be I hadn't even experienced it yet and I might rehearse it in my head over and over and over and over and over and over for different for different reasons I had good intentions but I was bringing about unnecessary anxiety unnecessary stress unnecessary emotions because of just preparing for something that wasn't good and so I realized I wasn't helping myself and so I got to a point where I now I catch myself in the moment you know now if I'm starting to to go in that way I realize oh you think this is helpful but it's actually not Marion says, when I meditate, I like to take deep breaths. It helps the focus and calm down. You're speaking my language, Marion, because I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, that's why my first guided meditation, in fact, I'm looking forward to doing another one. I think tomorrow I might actually uh, record and release the next meditation because I've been wanting to do it. And I just had some other things come up. But my first one was called Breathe Deeply, and it was for exactly that reason. And Marion, let me know if you've if you've heard it. Um, it's called Breathe Deeply. It's on YouTube. Aaron Hill, you can look up Aaron Hill Breathe Deeply. You can just search that, or you can go to my YouTube channel, Aaron Hill TV, and search right on the channel Breathe Deeply. But check it out and let me know what you think. The whole goal was to focus on something that we take for granted 
every single day and that is taking a deep breath so check that out okay so the bliss of blamelessness yeah that's the ability to assess our mistakes in a healthy way while not dwelling or ruminating negatively in a way that becomes more harmful than helpful to us and then last but not least um, this is just for uh, informational educational purposes uh, in this particular course that I was in they talked about the five precepts of Buddhism and so FYI the five are similar to other ethics systems that you hear um, they all kind of you know we're all people so we're all thinking about the same things on different sides of the earth <laughs> So the five are, I undertake to observe, uh, to abstain from taking life. Number two, abstain from not taking what is not given, a.k.a. stealing, to abstain from sensuous misconduct, which has to do with what they're talking about in general as sexual misconduct. Abstain from false speech or, you know, lying or being deceitful. Even lie, you ever heard of lie by omission? That's something, that's that's a concept I'm going to do a video on. Because I had never heard of what it, uh, lying by omission. Um, drop a line, let me know if you all ever heard of that. Something I learned about several years ago. And it was really cool because <laughs> it made me realize like I witnessed that a lot. And I'd even done it. And... But, it, but you don't necessarily classify it as a lie. So anyway, um, number five, to abstain from intoxicants as tending to cloud the mind. Now, what I put at the end of these notes is these, these are just foundational. These are just foundational general guidelines and, uh, and aren't hard and fast rules. And uh, of course, the reason why I said that it's because not only because it's true, but because sometimes it needs to be talked about when it comes to these things. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another video where I go into it much more deeply. Because definitely from a secular humanist point of view, you you don't you don't oversimplify things. A lot of times things can be really oversimplified <laughs> because like with those general guidelines I just read you could easily be in situations where you can't put blanket statements on those things. You have to take it situation by situation, scenario by scenario. So, yeah, we'll be talking about that more. But for the most part, you all get the gist. Use your head. <laughs> have some good damn sense when you're using your judgment. And, yeah. Hey, Putin. Thanks for watching. Hello. How are you? I hope you and your family are well. Shelly Slaughter Roberts, thank you so much for hanging out. And yeah, so, okay. To give a wrap up, this course, for those that don't know, have never been following this journey. This is the 10% Happier Self Care Journey. My name is Aaron Hill. I'm your host. <laughs> um, the 10% 10 Happier is an app that you can download on Android or iOS. You can look in the app store, look up 10% Happier. And it's an app that was created by Dan Harris, who's a news anchor who used to be on ABC, I think it was. And so Dan's story <clears throat> is that he had a panic attack on the news, uh, I guess about 10 years ago or so. And he um, he was dealing with a lot in his life at that point, and it led him to trying to, you know, figure out how to care for himself. He started studying meditation. He traveled around the world studying with different spiritual gurus. And because he's a skeptic, and I even believe an atheist as well, he he took the he could take the he could appreciate the the things that could be backed up by science and you know made sense but the other stuff would have started to go off um into the other places of certain uh out there beliefs he couldn't you know really couldn't really deal with those so what came out of it was him creating a course um that is a compilation of different 
contributors and different mini courses within them where it's everything that you would get from meditation and that kind of thing but without the religious context without it being in that package which so many resources are and you know it serves so many people but if you're a person <laughs> like myself it actually throws you off because while you're in the middle of a meditation and you're focusing on your breathing somebody starts talking about these out there ideas that you're just like okay and it can be distracting so he created this course it's called the 10 percent happier course and it is filled with a lot of mini courses and this is the journey that i've been on as i've been documenting my journey through it and sharing sharing everything that i've been learning um, to others for what it's worth so definitely check that out it has been a really good resource because it has everything from minute meditations to things for sleep you know you have meditations for sleep like a whole category they're always adding new to it and the range of topics are very very diverse and so the one that i'm in right now that i just started is called ethics and it's actually two parts it's ethics one and two so i'm in ethics one and I'm just I'm just enjoying it. I just finished the loving kindness um, course, and that's the next meditation, the guided meditation that I'm going to do. I'm going to record one that's around that concept. But yeah, this is my journey. If you haven't seen, if you want to see more of these videos, just look on my YouTube channel. I have a whole playlist. I've been doing this now since I think I started in. November I think it might have been so I have a lot because I've been doing it almost every day so thank you pudding hey Delima how are you how are you all doing had to get out and get some fresh air y'all cabin fever is a mug <laughs> but there's ways of self-care and that's the thing that I'm excited about that I'm sharing my journey and I'm sharing as much of it as possible to be able to say that even though we're all adjusting to new norms, that's what evolution is. So we can do that. And so the goal is to find as many things that's healthy and helpful as possible. And to be open to, to doing things a new way. So what doesn't break you makes you. And we're going to another level from here. So thanks for joining me today for the 10% happier self-care journey. Today we talked about ethics and meditation. If you just jumped in, please take it from the top. If you'd like to help me make more content like this, look at the info that's in the description of this video. If you're watching afterwards on YouTube and if you're watching live now, look in the comment section. And that's about it. As always, peace and be well. What's up, brother? Ryan RC, Breda Slim Holmes. Man, I miss you, bro. I miss you. We created some great times together, bro. I hope you and your family are well. <laughs> Ryan says, walk your journey, brother. Peace and respect. The Lehman says, all is well with my family. Thanks for asking. So glad to hear that. All right, everybody. I'm preparing for a great talk tonight that I think you'll be interested in. It's going to be people who come from the church uh, industry and are now not a part of it, all having a meeting on zoom to talk about our experiences and these kind of things so i'm going to try to live stream that so tune in and i'll see you on the few peace and be well